The opening bars of Beethoven's Serenade Opus 25 in D for flute, violin and viola. Beethoven wrote very little chamber music for the flute. In fact, that's just about the only piece. Um, and it's interesting that he wrote it in D major, which was a favorite key with flute players. The end of the 18th century and beginning of the 19th century marks a very exciting time in the development of wind instruments, including the flute. Hitherto, the flute had had generally just one key and was not required to play very loud or very chromatically. The revolution of Beethoven's writing, stretching the instruments and the orchestra, was mirrored necessarily by the development of the instruments. The Baroque one-keyed flute, which was used throughout most of the 18th century, had just one simple key and one has to use cross fingerings for all the different chromatic notes of the scale. This means that some of them are much more powerful than others and this gives colour to all the different keys. So it was necessary for instrument makers to develop their instruments and extend the range higher and sometimes lower and make them more homogenous and louder, frankly, to, to hold their own in the orchestra, especially in the case of a, a flute, which is a quiet instrument by nature. As the orchestra developed and composers required more and more of their players. You can see on the two examples here, four keyed flutes, the boxwood one in the middle, those keys have been added to what was a single keyed flute. Whereas the one on the end, the ebony flute, they are part of the design. That's a copy of Heinrich Grenzer of Dresden around the turn of the century, about 1790 to 1800. And this is the sort of flute that Beethoven would have known in Bonn and later in Vienna where he wrote his symphonies. These simple four keys added to the Baroque flute meant that the player could play quite a decent homogeneous chromatic scale. Consequently, flute players were able to mix the fingerings from the earlier system flute and incorporate some of the G-sharps and the B-flats with the new keys which were the uh, keys added to help the very notes that had been so weak on the old flute. This flute dates from about 1820 or so. Um, it's by William Henry Potter, made in London, and you can see these what we call pewter plug keys. They're rather noisy, but that's a six-keyed flute. So the, it went from one key to four key to six key, to eight key and these flutes were very popular both in London and on the, on the continent. Going from four keys to six keys to eight keys you really do have a full chromatic scale on this flute. <laughs> a greater potential to make the same quality of sound throughout the register. And as the orchestra got louder, this was more and more necessary, especially with somebody like Beethoven, who his first symphony and second symphony are in C and D. D is a great key for the flute. But then the Eroica symphony is in E flat, which is already taking us away from our comfort zone on the flute. With Beethoven, he made no allowances for the instruments. I think he was just stretching everything as far as it would go, both the 
instrument and the players who were required to play much louder than any other composer had ever asked and to do crazy things like playing really loud at the top and then suddenly pianissimo at the top, which is really very difficult on some of these old instruments. There's a lovely moment in the first movement where he gives the flute a solo in D flat, which is, and it's, it's piano, it's pianissimo with the strings. And this is, I like this moment because if the orchestra is playing quietly enough, you can dare to play on the old fingerings, which gives you an even more tender, wistful colour. Or with the keys. which is not just louder, it's more powerful. So what I've, I've hit on now is the fact that there were lots of different fingerings for the same notes. You could do a mixture of early one keyed fingerings, or you can start using the keys. And for notes like C, top C, or top F, there are five, six, seven, even eight different fingerings for one note. There's a selection of C's. They all have slightly different pitches and slightly different colours, but there may be times when they can be used to great effect in an orchestral piece, maybe when you want to blend with a particular instrument or when the, when the fingering is tricky and there's one good way to go and one very bad way to go. So it can be quite complicated learning all these fingerings and finding places to use them. The Nightingale from the end of the slow movement of Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, where he has a little trio, a bird trio. Flutes as Nightingale, Oboe as the Quail, and the Clarinet as the Cuckoo, a little oasis of woodland charm. I think Beethoven had a sense of humour in this, in this symphony, the great Eroica, my favourite, because the last movement, also in E-flat, goes through all sorts of tricky keys, but there's a great big flute solo and he puts it into D for the flute player. Now, I'm sure he would have probably not considered the flute player, but I, for one, am very glad that this bit is in D major and not in E-flat. And in this year of Beethoven's 250th anniversary, this is the flute I will probably use for most of the symphonies and operas I'll be playing. <laughs> 